people that come to our clinic are um, having trouble breathing during exercise. ILO um, is a problem in the larynx and it's obstructing during inspiration, causing problem breathing in. It's often confused with asthma, uh, but asthma, that is problem breathing out. And ALO is problem breathing in. With asthma, you also have most problem after exercise, but with ALO, you have problem during exercise. We have all kind of, kinds of people, from athletes to people who can't even go up the stairs. It's in all age groups, but the most common age is from 13 to 18 years of age. When people have breathing problems during exercise, uh, the most common thought is asthma. And you have to rule out asthma with proper tests. Uh, but uh, asthma and ALO, you can have symptoms uh, of both at the same time. Uh, but it's important to treat asthma first. But if the problems are not solved by asthma medication, because asthma medication does not help in the larynx, it does not help on ALO. The first thing you need is to ask for a proper asthma test. After you have done uh, a proper asthma test, and you have seen that asthma is not causing the problem, you can say to the GP, general practitioner, that you need to be examined for a laryngeal problem during exercise. It doesn't help looking at the larynx uh, at rest because then it will be normal. And so you actually need a test for the larynx during exercise. And to do this, we uh, do a continuous laryngoscopy during exercise test. With a laryngoscopy through a mask and the nose to get a good view of the larynx. And then the patient are running on a treadmill or are biking on a bike. I think it's very important that uh, the people see the respiratory system as one thing from the top and to the bottom and don't see one part from the other because you need to test the whole system. If you are figuring out what is causing the breathing problem for the patient, then you need to look both at the lungs and the larynx to solve it. The treatment option we have for ALO is uh, divided into conservative treatment and surgical treatment. And for conservative treatment, we have guided breathing uh, techniques with biofeedback, where we ask the patient to look at the screen, to look at their, their larynx, while we are explaining how to breathe uh, more correct. And uh, for patients who need more treatment, we have IMT, inspiratory muscle training, which is a device uh, where people are breathing against a resistance. And this helps coordinate the larynx and open it. You get more strength and you get more control. Okay. And we also have speech therapy for people who need more one-to-one -one, uh, treatment and need more time to get control of this abdominal breathing and opening of the larynx. You have a glottic collapse or you have a supraglottic collapse. You can't do surgery on the glottic collapse, but if it's mainly supraglottic collapse that causes your problem, you can do a laser surgery uh, procedure on that. And uh, we're cutting with a laser um, the supraglottic uh, area that are collapsing too much to open the space. We cannot touch the, the vocal cord, the glottic area. That's very important because then you are ruining the voice. But it's very easy and, and uh, a small procedure actually, but it's with full uh, anesthetics. We have many plans for the future. 
uh, on research and also uh, information and uh, uh, tutorials. We really want to, to help people with ALO and uh, hopefully we can also make some uh, uh, videos to show how they can breathe more correctly so people can do some kind of treatment on their own. Yeah, here in Bergen we have examined uh, 3,000 patients. 